So one of the best footballers in the world, Liverpool winger Mohamed Salah, has actually revealed that he's cut carbs out of his diet and has replaced them with fats. He claims that this change in his diet has caused the shreddingness of his body and the consistent performances that he's been putting in year after year after year where he gets goal after goal after assist after assist and he's consistently been Liverpool's best performer since he's gotten there. And ever since he said this, people on TikTok and on Instagram have been raving about how you need to be cutting out carbs completely and how you need to be replacing those carbs in your diet with fats. But as footballers, is this actually what we should be doing? To truly understand this problem and this question, we need to understand what are carbohydrates and what are their role in our bodies and what are fats and what are their roles in our bodies. First, I'm gonna talk about carbs. Carbohydrates or carbs as you might know them are just a form of glucose that we break down in our bodies. Glucose can be sugar, it can be cereals, it can be in vegetables. It's the basic thing in most foods. Carbohydrates or glucose are the basic foundation of what our cells need in order to create energy. It's gonna be a little bit of a basic biology lesson. So if you went to high school in the US or went to college in the US, you probably know a little bit about this, but let me give you a refresher. The energy that your cells need is called adenosine triphosphate. It is a nucleic acid and it is one of the most important nucleic acids in order for our body to function as well as DNA and RNA. Now when glucose, carbs, but we'll call it glucose for the sake of simplicity, when glucose enters our cells, our cells convert that glucose into adenosine triphosphate or ATP. This process is called cellular respiration. There are two kinds of cellular respiration and there's two kinds of getting energy. There's aerobic and there's anaerobic cellular respiration. Aerobic cellular respiration is the more common cellular respiration, which happens all the time. And it's called aerobic because there is oxygen and glucose that are both required to make this happen. So I'm gonna simplify this process of aerobic cellular respiration. And I'm just gonna say that it takes the oxygen and it takes the glucose and it turns it into 36 ATP. The byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. This is a super efficient way of our bodies getting energy and our cells getting energy because we produce a lot of adenosine triphosphate. Anaerobic is the opposite. It is, as a matter of fact, anaerobic, which means no oxygen or anti-oxygen. And there's no oxygen in that process because the cells need energy so fast that there's no oxygen coming in. And it basically just goes through only the first cycle glycolysis of uh, the cellular respiration and it only gives you two ATP and the byproducts in an animal or a human for example is lactic acid. Lactic acid is that feeling you get that almost like tingly stinging feeling you get after a really heavy workout or after a ton of running or a ton of lifting or a ton of sprinting in a soccer game. It's the same thing and that is the difference between aerobic workouts which are something more like a 10 mile run or a marathon or something of that nature or sprinting high intensity interval training, which is anaerobic. As a footballer, you know that you need both. You're gonna have moments where you're jogging on the pitch and that's more aerobic style. And you're gonna have moments, especially as a striker, for example, with me, I'm a striker. I'm doing a ton of sprints, a lot of short sprint work. So I am doing a lot of anaerobic workouts. Now that we've gone through all of these processes, the anaerobic, the aerobic, and all of the ATP that gets produced from each process, we need to realize that the main ingredient in both of these processes is glucose. So how are you going to cut glucose out of your diet? How are you gonna cut carbs out of your diet? I understand why they say what they say in terms of cutting out carbs. They mean cutting out unhealthy sugars that give you way too much glucose and that glucose that can't really be metabolized by the cells gets stored in your liver, gets stored in your fat stores, all of that kind of stuff, I totally understand. 
but there's no way you can cut out carbs as an athlete, especially with the workload of a footballer. You cannot cut carbs out of your diet because you simply will not have enough energy in your cells, in your mitochondria, in order to do the to provide your body with energy to keep putting in that same workload. As a matter of fact, when professional footballers or when athletes, when they mention that they've cut out carbs from their diet, they're speaking mainly about sugars like bread, really unhealthy bread, processed foods, candy, you know, crap like that, donuts, I don't know. But they do have a lot of carbohydrates in their diet with healthy brown rice, with potatoes, with vegetables, with beans, with pasta, sometimes in moderation, and with healthy kinds of bread like rye bread, for example. Those kinds of carbohydrates are going to give you a lot of ATP that you'll need both in the long term and in the short term. What happens is your cells will store ATP, they will store adenosine triphosphate and they will store glucose for when they need it. Complex carbs will provide you with a much longer term source of energy and simpler carbs will provide you a very quick, short burst of energy. So there's room for both kinds of carbs within our diet because we need both long-term energy and short-term energy. Now on to fats. We need to understand what fats are and what role they play in our body. Now when we talk about fats, we're talking about like nuts, cashews, that kind of stuff. Oils as well, can't forget about oils. Fats are really essential for the basic functions in the human body, which is why you can't cut those out either. For one, they help the body with absorption of essential vitamins like vitamins A and E. They help with the production of hormones throughout the body and they help release energy more in the long form. So with that being said, fats are extremely important for bodily functions that are normal on the day-to-day -day basis and for athletes. It is extremely important to have fats in your diet because you need to be balanced your hormones, you need to have your vitamins and nutrients absorbed correctly through the body and efficiently, and you do need long form stores of energy within your cells. Carbohydrates are your essential, essential, essential form of getting energy to your cells, which is needed throughout the body if you want to be an efficient athlete. Not all carbs are created equally. There are carbs you should definitely avoid and definitely cut out, but there are carbs that are 100% necessary for proper function as an athlete. You also should not cut out fats from your diet because you need to be balanced and you need to absorb all of these nutrients from your food correctly and efficiently in order for you to really be the best athlete you can possibly be. So what would I recommend as a professional footballer for you guys, my subscribers who are trying to make it pro, make it semi-pro, go to college soccer, or just get to the next level, or even just enjoying the game as an athlete or as a person. This is for all levels of footballers that just wanna be healthy. I would say cut down your sugar consumption. Definitely have carbs vegetables, healthy breads, healthy rices, all of those are extremely important for you as a footballer. Please supplement that with the consumption of fats such as oils and nuts, and that will really help you with your diet and it will help you have longer stores of energy over the long term as a footballer. Now please take all of this with a grain of salt, okay? I don't mean literally, but I mean, take all of this information with a grain of salt because I'm not a professional nutritionist. However, I did study all of this. I went to college, I went to university and I was a biology major. And all of this is very simple, basic biology. It is an extremely basic biology. So, you know, take it with a grain of salt, but I'm not saying this out of lack of research or lack of knowledge. In fact, if you want to do your own research, I would recommend you 100% to do so. But this is a pretty extensively researched topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys. 
Let me know what you want to see in the next video, and I will see you in the next video, inshallah. Peace.